All right, uh, you guys all know we got uh, Northern Iowa this week. Um, very good football team. We'll leave out here on Friday. Uh, we'll leave here at 3 o'clock and should get up there around 5 o'clock and have a walk through. Go over to their facility there and get a workout in and then uh, come back, have dinner, chapel, and then uh, go to bed and get ready to play. But uh, Northern Iowa, they're the defending champs. And uh, you know, obviously they won the conference last year. They're coming off a tough loss against uh, North Dakota State. But uh, they fared well uh, at home this year. I think the most they've given up point-wise at home, I think, is 10 points. So they have uh, have definitely a home field advantage. It's a t difficult place to play, loud, um, and uh, got a good football team. I think that all comes with the territory. Coach Farley's done a great job there of building a program that's uh, stocked with talent. Uh, they're, they're 300 plus across the board up front on their offensive line. Um, obviously, they're quite a dynamic offense, and uh, I've had a lot of success this year. And uh, you know, we'll have our hands full with them. And on uh, defensively, you know, they're probably one of the top defenses in the conferences, uh, in our conference anyways. You know, you look at them, they're giving up 15 points a game. I think they've given up uh, 13 or 14 touchdowns this year. So they uh, are really good. Starts up front with Boothby. It's very disruptive. He is the best defensive lineman in the league. Uh, he was the best defensive lineman in the league last year. But uh, he is definitely a guy that you got to know where he is at all times. And then you got behind him, you got Scott there, who's leading the conference and top in the country as far as tackles, and he's an excellent player. We got six returning players there on defense that are seniors, so uh, we have some familiarity with those guys from last year. But uh, they're a very well coached football team. Got a great uh, field goal kicker, now a 48 yarder, yarder last week uh, on the road there. So they got a good football team. They're well coached, and uh, you know we. Uh, just got to go out right now and keep working hard and trying to get better every week. Coach, we see the standings uh, from your perspective as, as a group. What's at stake Saturday? Well, I mean, you know, we said a couple weeks ago we kind of control our own destiny and uh, just take things one game at a time and get a win. And standings wise, I really don't know where we are. Um, you know, I know that if we take care of our business, we'll be in good shape. So that's all we worry about. Obviously, the, the, the big storyline right now is about Rennie. Uh, He's going to be Can you talk about what you saw from the backup and then what uh, Terrell brings? Well, obviously, uh, Terrell, you know, he's he's a dynamic player. Uh, I told Coach Farley last year when I was at the coaches' convention, I thought he should uh, come out early. And, uh, <laughs> obviously, we didn't get that done, but uh, I was hoping he'd come out early. He's a very dynamic player, and uh, he'll play. Uh, there's no question. He can't get caught up in all that hype. He'll be out there playing. And... Uh, He's a good football player. He's responsible for about 250 to 270 yards of their offense. And uh, it runs through him. And uh, they got a bunch of other good players around him, though. Uh, they've done a good job recruiting. And that shows up, uh, you know, in special teams and just when you watch them play. They're a very talented football team. And uh, that comes with, obviously, having a foundation and a program with great tradition. Uh, the backup quarterback, you know, they'll, they'll continue to do the same things they like to do offensively. But uh, for a freshman, he had some success and did some good things there. And uh, he was in a situation where they were behind, so they had to throw the ball. But uh, they're not going to completely change their whole offense for uh, one guy, but he's very capable of doing it. Good quarterback, and I'm sure they feel good about his future there at uh, Northern Iowa. Eric, you, you say you want to go one and zero every week. Is this the most important game in your short tenure here for you? Well, Every week they are, you know. Um, we're just trying to get some consistency and, and show that we can win football games, you know. Uh, since we've been here, we've been competitive in every single football game, uh, regardless of who they are. And uh, we just want to start showing some consistency that we can start winning some football games on a consistent basis. And we, have, we, have, we haven't done that. So, you know, uh, this is another game. Uh, it's obviously an exciting game because of uh, the fact that it's a, a, a team like Northern Iowa. I mean, they've had a lot of success against us uh, and, and our, against our program. You know, overall, if you look, look at the overall series, um, they've had a lot of success. And, uh, you know, they, they're, a good football, they're a good football program. they got nine players. I mean, to give you an idea where they're at and where we're at, they have nine players in the NFL roster right now. You know what I'm saying? So they obviously know what they're doing recruiting-wise, and they've been recruiting the right guys. I know, I know you, you want to have one more point than them. 
when they scored 21 or 17 and one against against Youngstown State, I mean, do you have a number of how many points you need to score to win? We don't. We don't. I mean, the only thing we do on Sunday, all day Sunday, Monday, and like today, is is um, we break down uh, what they do and, and uh, draw up football plays that we think are going to be successful. And uh, you know, we don't walk out there and, and look at a, a game plan and say, hey, this one's good for. 42 or 56 or anything like that. I mean, we sit there and look at it and say, hey, these are plays we're going to need to run. We're going to need to execute them. And uh, if we if we go out and execute them, we'll have a chance to do some good things. Uh, sometimes we fall short on the execution part. And uh, sometimes people change some things and do some things different. And we've kind of realized that people are always going to probably try to do something different against us than they normally done in the past, you know, to try to keep us uh, off balance. But We've uh, learned early on, I guess you'd say, that we have to be ready for anything and we have to constantly be evolving. Coach, your defense has obviously been getting better. Um, how do you feel it matches up with what Northern Iowa likes to do now and, and, and your ability to contain that a little bit? Well, you know, uh, I think, you know, the, the question is going to be, you know, if you start really at the line of scrimmage, you know, they're 300 plus across the board. Uh, they definitely have one of the biggest lines next to probably North Dakota State in, in the conference. Uh, they look like they've been eating a lot of protein, lifting weights, doing the things that you normally do when you're in a weight program and been doing what you need to do in the offseason. So that's a compliment to their strength coach and their program. Uh, they uh, will be a, a test for us up front. You know, uh, how are we going to match up with them? You know, I watched them against Iowa State. Uh, Iowa State. As you guys are well aware of, just beat up on Texas Tech. So, you know, if you take away probably some of those 13 penalties they had in that football game, they probably might win that game. So, it's one of those deals where they they they're a Division One football team, no question. I mean, they beat a lot of a lot of schools, a lot of a lot of places in this country. It's going to be how well we can control line of scrimmage because uh, you know if they're getting you know five, seven, nine a chunk right there in the run game, that's going to be obviously an issue. And then, uh, you know, skill-wise, they have receivers can run. And uh, I feel like, you know, they have, they feel confident in their offensive line that they can protect well enough uh, that they can give them time to throw the football down the field. So uh, we're going to have our hands full. They're, I mean, they're a, good, they're a good group. Conversely, you mentioned they have one of the top defenses in the country, not just in the league. Uh, how does what? You do offensively give you confidence that you can make those numbers change in a bad way for them. Well, I think you know it's just uh, just through your preparation. Um, you know, uh, it's a challenge. I mean, anytime you know, it's like going and, and playing the Super Bowl champs. Uh, they're the champs, you know, and uh, I know they have lost, but they're still the champs until uh, deemed otherwise. And. Uh, you know, we're just fighting and scratching and clawing right now. So uh, we're going to go play the champs and see what happens. But uh, it's a challenge. I mean, you've only given up 15 points a game. They've only given up 13 touchdowns. So uh, they obviously know what they're doing. And they got a good group. I mean, their defensive line is good. Their linebackers are good. they got a bunch of interceptions. they got 14 interceptions on the year. they got eight fumble recoveries. Every time I see them try to tackle somebody, they're stripping a the ball, grabbing it, pulling out. I mean, they create turnovers. And uh, you better take care of the football. And when you get in the red zone, they 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 are much better. They've gotten better in the red zone. I think they're 68 percent in the red zone. You know, they're one of the best uh, in our league in the red zone as far as red zone defense. The red zone offense is good too, but the red zone defense is really good. And uh, that's something that uh, they obviously emphasize, and that's the name of the game, whether you score or not. Eric, what do you do to offset the noise? Do you do, you do silent count and you work on that? Well, we, you know, noise isn't as, as a major factor as a lot of people make it out to be because everything we do a lot of times is hand signal wise. We're not in a huddle, we're not calling plays. Cadence wise, uh, it's not a big deal because we, we have silent count. So it's not anything uh, really extremely uh, a big of a deal as people want to make it out to be. But uh, we will, Coach Parks is going to have some noise. Uh, we'll have some noise out there for us. We've got some guys lifting up there. That's a good sign. Hopefully they're my guys. Uh, well, you got to start lifting some more weights. But, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have some noise in there on Wednesday and Thursday. Coach Parks has got something set up. So 
you know, he's a weather guy and a noise guy. <laughs> Coach, uh, playing indoors on the turf with the way your offense has been able to put up points, um, do you feel good going in playing on turf with what you guys will be able to do offensively? Is that a, an advantage, maybe? No, I mean it's just you know it's the same uh, the same surface we have out here, and then uh, you know when we go in indoor, it'll be the same exact flat surface. We have a little bit of a crown on our field, so it'll be similar. And we've been practicing over there quite a bit, um, getting getting ready. You said uh, he thought Obaseki was the best defense player earlier here. Now you say you think Boothby's better. Well, Boothby's the best interior player. Uh, Obaseki is definitely the best at in his document. What about, uh, I mean, do you, do you use Dante to mimic Terrell, or do you put Hines in there or somebody else? Oh, no, Dante and Anya, he can, he can fly around. He can run. He gets, he's a nightmare every day for us to practice. Him and <laughs> DeMond Himes, uh, those two guys have single-handedly made our defense better. You know, uh, guys like him, Brandon Neal. Those guys, Parnell Taylor, those guys are really hard to tackle. Uh, so we get great looks from our scout team. Our defense gets mad and they start yelling and wanting to fight and all this and that, but it's good for practice. I go, I run the scout team on defense for the offense and for the defense. We kind of have some fun. Today we're going to get after them. We'll light them up a little bit today.